Let us now take the third model from data sufficiency. Here in this model, we have a question followed by three statements, but this is quite opposite to what we have done in model two. If you remember, even in model two, we had a question followed by three statements and in model three as well, the same thing happens. The question is given followed by three statements. But the difference between model two and model three is that in model two, we have to find out which of the statements are required to get the answer. Whereas in model three, we have to find out which of the statements are not required in finding out the answer. So the only point here is we need to check which of the statements are useless in finding out the answer. So quite similar to model two, the solution remains same. So as you can see, model three is quite similar to model two, but in model two, we find out which are the useful statements. And in model three, we have to find out which are the useless statements. The working of model three remains same as model two. Here also, we find out what are the useful statements in answering the question. And depending on the useful statements, the left out statements are considered as useless. So let's take an example and understand how to solve these type of questions. The question here is three friends P, Q and R started a partnership business investing money in the ratio 5 is to 4 is to 2 respectively for a period of three years. What is the share of P in the total profit? So as you can see here, this is a question from partnership. Here, three friends P, Q and R started a partnership business investing the amounts in the ratio 5 is to 4 is to 2 for a period of three years. So very clearly, all the three friends together started the business and they have invested the amounts in the ratio of 5 is to 4 is to 2 for total three years. So as you can see, time period for each of the friends P, Q and R is three years here. And we need to know what is the share of P in the total profit. So P's individual profit has to be calculated out of the total profit. The given statements are as follows. Statement one, total investment in the business is rupees 22,000. Statement two, total profit at the end of three years is three eighth of the total investment. And statement three, the average amount of profit earned per year is rupees 2,750. So let's see which of these statements help us in finding out the answer. And then depending on that, the other statement can be taken as a useless statement or a statement which is redundant here. Now, as we see here, the amount was invested in the ratio of 5 is to 4 is to 2 and the total period is 3 years. That means each person here, P, Q and R has invested for 3 years. Since the time period remains same for each of the persons, we can say that the profit will be in the ratio of 5 is to 4 is to 2. Generally, we know that profit should be divided based on the ratio of investment into time of investment. But here, since the time of investment is same for each of the friends, we can directly say that the ratio of investment itself will be the ratio of profits. So we can say profit of P is to profit of Q is to profit of R should be in the ratio 5 is to 4 is to 2. That is nothing but their investment ratio. This is possible here because the time of investment is same for each of the persons. Now, once we have got the ratio to find out the profit of P as given in the question, we need to find out the share of P. So to find out the profit or share of P, we should know what is the total profit earned by all the three persons together. Once the total profit is known by using this ratio, we can find out the individual profits. So let us see which statement here gives us the total profit. Statement one, total investment is 22,000. Total investment is 22,000. So we only know that the total investment is 22,000. Second statement says the total profit at the end of three years, the total profit at the end of three years is three eight of the total investment. And third statement says average amount of profit earned per year is 2750. That means average profit per year is equal to 2750. Now, if we try to observe statement one individually cannot give us the answer. Why? Because that only talks about total investment of 22,000. And here we are in need of total profit. We have to find out what is the total profit PT. Statement two says total profit at the end of three years is three eighth of total investment. Again, statement two alone cannot give the answer. Why? Right? Because total profit here is three by eight of total investment. So until and unless we know what is total investment, we cannot find out total profit. So very clearly statement two alone is not sufficient. But if we combine statement number one and statement number two, we get to know that the total profit at the end of three years is three eighth of total investment. And total investment from statement one is nothing but 22,000. So if you use statement one and two together, we can say total profit will be equal to three by eight into 22,000. 
that will give us total profit and once we calculate total profit individual profit of p can be calculated that means combination of one and two will give us the answer if you look at statement three the average amount of profit earned per year is 2750 that means profit of one year is 2750 so profit for three years will be 2750 into three that gives us the total profit so statement three alone gives us the total profit why because per year profit is known when this average is multiplied with three we get the total profit so very clearly answer can be obtained either by a combination of one and two or by statement three alone but remember friends here we are not supposed to find out what statements are required we are supposed to find out what statements are not required in answering the question or which of the statements are redundant and can be thrown away or can be dispensed with so if you try to observe here when we use statement one and two together we can say that statement three is not required statement three is useless and when we use only statement three we can say that one and two together are useless so the answer for this question should be either only three only statement three or or both one and two together are redundant one and two together are redundant or useless are the redundant statements so this is the answer for the given question that means either three is redundant or both one and two together are redundant statements redundant statements here means nothing but these statements are not required in finding out the answer so if you use one and two three is redundant only three is redundant if you use only three then we can say one and two together are redundant so that is the answer for this question here let us now take the second example from model three of data sufficiency where a question is given followed by three statements and we have to find out which of these statements are redundant or which of these statements are not required in answering the question let's look at the question here at what time will the train reach city x from city y so we are supposed to find out at what time will the train reach city x from city y so it has started from city y at what time will it reach city x the statement one here is train crosses another train of equal length of 200 meters running in opposite direction in 15 seconds statement two the train leaves city y at 7 15 am for city x situated at a distance of 558 kilometers and the last statement here is the 200 meter long train crosses a signal pole in 10 seconds and if you try to observe to find out how much time is required by the train to reach city x from city y we need to know what is the distance between these two cities and what is the speed of the train to find out the time we need to know what is the distance and what is the speed so these are the two things which are required to answer the question so let us first find out which statement gives us both these values and then accordingly the remaining statements can be taken as redundant statements if you look at statement one the train crosses another train of equal length of 200 meters that means the train lengths are 200 meters each running in opposite direction in 15 seconds so both the trains are running in opposite directions they cross each other in 15 seconds and length of both the trains is 15 seconds we know that when two trains are running in opposite directions the equation to be used is s1 plus s2 equals to l1 plus l2 divided by t this is the equation which has to be used s1 plus s2 equals to l1 plus l2 divided by t here as you can see l1 and l2 both are 200 meter each why because both the trains are of equal length of 200 meters so l1 is 200 l2 is 200 and they cross each other in 15 seconds so the time here is 15 seconds but if you observe s1 plus s2 is on the left hand side that means from this equation or from this statement we cannot find out what is the speed of train 1 we can only find out the sum of their speeds why because s2 is not known to us until and unless we know what is the speed of the second train we cannot find out speed of the first train that means statement number one here is neither giving us the speed of the train nor the distance between two stations so very clearly statement one here is neither giving us the distance between the two stations nor the speed of the train so we can say statement number one is not useful at all so it is a redundant statement but before we come to a conclusion we have to check statement two and statement three as well now from statement two we know that the train leaves city y at 7 15 am for city x situated at a distance of 558 kilometers so very clearly the distance between the two stations is 558 kilometers and that is given in statement number two also we know the starting time the train started at 715 
But here, as you can see, we only know the distance. Speed is not known. So let's see if statement 3 can give us the speed. Statement 3 says the 200 meter long train crosses a signal pole in 10 seconds. That means this train of length 200 meters is able to cross a pole in 10 seconds. Now when a train is crossing a pole, we know that speed of the train equals to length of the train divided by time. Now if you observe statement number 3, length of the train is given, that is 200 meters and time is also given, that is 10 seconds. Once we know the length of the train and time, the speed of the train can be calculated. So from statement 3, we are able to calculate the speed of the train. Let us take it as ST. We will get some value. Let us not waste time in finding out the answer there. Now if we observe, statement 2 gives us the distance and statement 3 gives us the speed. And these are the two things required to answer this question. So statement 2 with statement 3 together can give us the answer. But our question here is, which of these three statements are redundant? As 2 and 3 gives us the answer together, we can say that only statement 1 is not useful or only statement 1 is redundant. So the answer for this question is only statement 1 is redundant. So this is how we only have to find out which of the statements are required and based on that we can say that the remaining statements are not required or they are not useful to us. So this is the third model from data sufficiency. So that's all from data sufficiency. Practice well on these questions. Remember you need not solve the complete question. We only have to check the sufficiency of the given data. That is which of the statements or a combination of which of the given statements can help us in finding out the answer. As the weightage for this topic is 5 marks, make sure that you practice well on them and bag your 5 marks in the exam. See you in the next session. Thank you.